Second try. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> so, I'm very glad and happy to be here the third time. I really look forward every year to come to Parma. And the last two years, um, uh, those of you who know me uh, know I gave lessons as good I, as I could in this very um, foreign situation with much more students, other language, and so on. And in the last year, I had the situation that I was asked to talk about ear training um, to music non-musicians or musicians coming from totally other musical work as, as techno fans. And so I had a lot of, of reflection about what I do and, and when asked for Parma I thought it could be interesting this time to have a mixture of reflection about what I do, showing material and trying out. And I hope uh, you will like it. So I will first give some considerations. Later you will get a handout with some of my exercises and as far as, far as we have the time you can try out together with me and I hope this will be interesting and funny for you. Come I've intuited, Eric has just started here in Palma, it's the third time that we invite him and for her it's always an experience that she has a new and stimulant because Qui si trova a lavorare con persone che vengono da tradizioni musicali diverse, in generale diverse da quelle con cui lei è abituata a lavorare a Basilea e diverse fra di loro, perché abbiamo corsi jazz, corsi pop, corsi tradizionali, corsi di musica antica. Per cui è una situazione stimolante sicuramente per lei, ma è molto stimolante per noi anche. So, you didn't hear what I tell. Okay, I will begin now. So music dictation, we know it all, is one of the ear training standard disciplines because dealing with written music is one of our standards being classic musicians. So it's in some way the reverse exercise to sight singing. Over sight singing I will talk on Friday. And the aim of music dictation is correlating written music with inner hearing. You hear music, you notate, and you compare, is this what I have written, the same as I heard. At the beginning we will deal with melody dictation. When we are more advanced, there can be other tasks, and I will talk about this too. Okay, the dictato musical is one of the abilities thank you, for the materia of ear training. I percet diversi può essere considerato l'esercizio inverso rispetto alla lettura a prima vista. In ogni caso lo scopo è quello di correlare ciò che è sulla carta con ciò che noi percepiamo in, internamente. Inizialmente si tratta di sviluppare l'abilità del dettato metodico con gli allievi dei primi anni e andando avanti um, si tratta di, abilitare, di sviluppare abilità uh, più raffinate. Uh, venerdì uh, Elke avrà una lezione specifica sulla lettura a prima vista. Oggi invece siamo più focalizzati sul dettato musicale. So there are in common two main steps of melody dictation. First, we hear the melody, melody is presented. We remember the melody, we keep it in mind. And second, so here we have training of concentration and memory span, of course. Without, it will not work. And then writing down what I keep in mind. There, uh, it is, uh, therefore, it is necessary to recognize the principles of order in the music I heard. So, time, order, time signatures, rhythmical patterns, and tonality, melodic shapes. Well, il dettato comporta principalmente due abilità abilità di tipo legata alla memorizzazione e senza la quale non è possibile sviluppare alcuna abilità nel dettato che consiste principalmente di eh, concentrazione e eh, riuscire ad estendere la propria capacità di memorizzazione nel tempo. La seconda abilità riguarda la scrittura della melodia, quindi riconoscere i principi di ordine, di, di, di successione e per quello che riguarda sia le strutture ritmiche sia le strutture legate alla tonalità e alla, diciamo, al profilo melodico. And it is necessary to know about the principles of musical. Ovviamente è necessario sapere scrivere la musica. Of course. 
it. So you have to know something before, otherwise it will not work. So now I want to tell about my um, situation with my students in Basel. So they come to me over three years of their bachelor program, three lessons a week. One lesson is for sight reading, and one normally for dictation, and one for harmony. But the, the, the lessons for harmony and dictation are combined, so I often have, uh, um, have things to put this together. It's not always one lesson, so and one how lesson. How many years? Uh, last three uh, years. Two. Three years. Uh, three lessons per week for three years. So it is. Okay. La, in Basile, a Basilea, al corso, al bachelor, che è l'equivalente del nostro triennio, il corso è strutturato su tre anni, mentre generalmente in Italia, in Italy we have two years, usually. Uh, normalmente in Italia il triennio dura due anni, con, con qualche eccezione, ma normalmente due anni. E quello che fa la differenza è che eh, ci sono tre incontri settimanali di art training, uno dedicato alla lettura a prima vista, uno al dettato e uno all'armonia. Due incontri, one lesson and two combined lessons. So I see ah, okay. students twice. Ok, Sorry, I wasn't clear. Okay. <laughs> right. And uh, how do each lesson last? 50 minutes. 50 minutes per lesson. Two, two went up. Ah, 50. 50. 50. No, 50. Not 50. Okay. <laughs> All my students were happy. <laughs> only 15 oh, minutes. A very fast lesson. <laughs> yes, I'm talking very fast, as you know. <laughs> okay. So. Okay, my lesson is 50 minutes. Quindi, eh, quindi, due lessioni da 50 minuti. Two lessons, 50 minutes each. 50 minutes each. Okay. So, remembering the melody, the first part of the dictation is generally no problem for my students. I must say it's, it's not, not uh, an issue I'm dealing with long time. So the first my students learn at the beginning is stay natural while hearing the music. First let the music in, in your mind, and then analyze. So these problems with, with memory span always occur when students get cramped and try to analyze before they have heard. You know, so I, you know, with, this, with a pencil in the hand, and then they sit and I say, what do you want to write? Did you hear what I played? No. So, what do you want to write? First, relax, put the pencil away, try out, it's really helpful to put the pencil away, I can, can say it makes a difference, and then let the music in, and then when it's in your mind, then you can work. When your ones are courageous enough to do this, you have no problems with memory span. Generalmente ricordare la memorizzazione della linea melodica non è un problema se eh, lo studente non inizia subito ad ascoltare con la matita in mano e cercare di trascrivere ancora prima di aver ascoltato il brano. Quindi avere un atteggiamento di naturalezza, lasciare entrare la musica, la music in, e, e poi arrivare all'analisi. Ma se non si è prima ascoltato il brano è impossibile uh, avere una memorizzazione del brano e procedere poi con l'analisi e la frammentazione in segmenti più piccoli. Yes, I am also consequently avoiding pressure with the length of the sections and the amount of repetitions. So I, I know that some colleagues um, do it in other way and I, sometimes I have students from Hungary who come say, we need more challenge, only limited repetitions, but i cannot understand this because I see in, in the, in the um, majority of my students that it's really good for them not to have pressure in this moment. So I let this away, enough repetitions, sections short enough to the concentration in this, in, in this moment. This can, can differ from group to group and from situation to situation. And this leads to a general relaxation which I find very, very important. This opens the ear and the mind and consequently the memory span improves. So this is for me a very, very important principle in my work. Spesso avere un atteggiamento di, uh, diciamo, di richiesta molto elevata nei confronti dello studente, quindi con uh, pochissime ripetizioni di sezioni molto, molto lunghe, eh, ha l'effetto contrario di uh, ottenere una memorizzazione peggiore. Quindi lei in genere non, non utilizza sezioni molto lunghe 
da memorizzare ed è abbastanza libera nel numero di ripetizioni di proposte. Mm -hmm. This, so it's a psychological, a psychological effect when I know I can have more repetitions, I do need less. When I know only three, I get cramped and so my focus will be narrow and I will not let the music in. So I do not need more repetitions in this way, of course not, because people are relaxed. It's really helpful, so I, I'm convinced of this. In se, written, io, se io so di avere solo due o tre ripetizioni a disposizione, sono già teso perché so che probabilmente non arriverò a terminare il lavoro e questo mi rende poco efficiente anche alla prima e alla seconda ripetizione. E tanto più che vedo che in written exams uh, they have either your own PC or tablet. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what I, what I have as the next point. In written exams and, and um, sometimes, so once a month or, or six weeks, um, I work, I let the students work with tablet PC, so I was lucky my, my chief had had, had uh, uh, money at the end of 2013 and asked me what can I buy for you and I said oh please give me tablets and good good headphones I had very very bad ones and it makes a difference and so we have 10 tablets in, in the room and they can work there with a limited time but they can do it in their own tempo in their own order and this is really taking stress out of excellent situation here you can see how it looks, so it's a little photo out of my room, so these are Samsung tablets in this size and very fine studio um, headphones who help a lot. And this is really an, a very good thing to work. The only thing I give in the rhythm um, exams is the rhythm dictation because I prefer to have it from human being to human being. I'm um, here, the advantage of being human is more than the advantage to have unlimited um, repetitions due to my experience and students are um, okay with this. Okay. E quando poi ci sono gli esami, in ogni caso ogni studente ha il suo tablet con uh, auricolari o cuffie di qualità, il, uh, il suo dipartimento le ha acquistato recentemente 10 nuovi tablet. Eh, veniamo tutti in Basilea. Eh, <laughs> Only 10. <ten. laughs> e, e quindi ogni studente in un tempo limitato può decidere come, cosa e quanto ascoltare per, uh, per trascrivere il proprio, proprio per realizzare la propria trascrizione. L'unica cosa che lei fa sempre, se mai dalla registrazione, riguarda il dettato, the rhythmic dictation, the do, okay. il dettato ritmico invece lo, lo svolge lei in prima persona sempre, cioè da, da umano a umano senza la mediazione di, di una macchina. It's easier for the students and they prefer to do it this way. Okay. Because maybe they also can see your gesture. It's, uh, it's, it's easy. They can feel my pulse. Yes. They can feel, and I, I speak and I conduct. They can look to my hand and they can feel what I do. They haven't even to look, they feel. As, as when, when you conduct. The tattoo rhythm is fatto in prima persona permette anche di vedere una gestualità, un respiro, un fraseggio che nella registrazione non è possibile. And students prefer, because I offer them, I, we can do this with a MIDI file, but they don't want to. They prefer me to do this, in spite of the fact that, that the repetitions are limited. Yeah. Okay, so writing down the melody is another thing. Here my students have much more difficulties. And they are, in my special situation, often resulting from a situation in the German-speaking regions. Most of my students are coming from there. So in there, the situation is not existing or unsatisfactory preparatory training. So they begin to prepare in this uh, ear training music theory section for their entrance exam, not years before, but in the best case, months. Weeks, days, sometimes hours before the um, entrance exam. And that is to be noticed. It did not grow together with the other abilities they have. So normally, at the beginning, they do have ne neither developed relative orientation in tonality um, or consciousness of the degrees, nor enough knowledge of the tonalities. So, so when they find out it's a fifth degree, it means not that they know it's no G or A, given the tonality. They need two minutes to find out what the, what the third degree of E major is. It lasts a long time. They are not 
alphabetized. Alphabetized, I don't know how in English it's, it's correct. In, in a sufficient way. E nei momenti in cui ci sono, si passa la parte melodica del dettato, quindi il dettato melodico, le difficoltà sono maggiori, e dovute principalmente alla situazione nei paesi di, nei paesi di area tedesca, diciamo così, e perché non esiste una preparazione eh, sufficiente prima del percorso accademico, prima della, del teoriente, diciamo così. Quindi quello che riguarda una formazione eh, musicale completa per un orientamento tonale, la consapevolezza armonica dei gradi, non viene sufficientemente sviluppato o portato avanti insieme all'abilità strumentale. E in addition, there is this existing typical German notion of some kind of modular functionality of using perception and this leads to inadequate strategies. I want to explain what I mean because it's really strong in the heads of my students and it's really a problem for me as teacher. So here um, I give you a, a quotation from a, in Germany very famous book from Clemens Kühn where you do, do not know the name, he is really um, a very famous theory teacher brought out a lot of younger professors on conservatories and he's really a fine man, I estimate him, ho, him, him high and um, he knows about the bad situation of ear training and in the 18s he brought out a little book it, uh, with the name Gehörbildung im Selbststudium, ear training, how do I do it yourself um, and it, it is, came out in the 8s edition, you see, so it was bought, nearly every German music student has this, in, in the, anywhere, so, in, and on the back of the book, there's the essence of the book, he writes, I, I tried to translate, the ability to recognize and label an interval, single interval, or a six chord, easily, is requirement for the comprehension of musical context. This is a German belief, and you all know it's not true. Because if this were true, uh, every, uh, every concert uh, visit is total, totally senseless. When you are in the concert, would you say, uh, I do not understand the musical context? No, because I, have, I would not enjoy the concert. <laughs> do I have the time to, to analyze all intervals in six chords? Of course not, I will not do. I will not enjoy the concert when I do so. So this is really a misunderstanding here. So the idea is, learn the intervals, practice the intervals. We talked about this uh, at lunch, it was, was the same issue. And then learn the six chords, and then, ha, comes out music. Uh, and the ear training uh, pupil is so happy you can see. Hmm? Yeah. In Germany, in the previous slide, okay, fine. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> C'è questa idea di uh, formazione modulare modular uh, abilities was uh, uh, on the previous slide uh, modular is that right okay. modular okay cioè l'idea che uh, per formare dei bravi musicisti sia sufficiente che io riconosca dei singoli elementi all'interno della musica uh, quindi single structures yeah, an interval a chord and so on e quindi, come nell'esempio qui, l'idea che io riconosco tutti gli intervalli, riconosco l'accordo e la sua posizione, a questo punto ho formato un buon musicista. Questo è l'equivoco di fondo eh, che c'è in questa formazione prima della, della, di quando gli studenti iniziano il percorso da Ecke. Ok, then on, on page 7 of the same book he writes It is one of the realities of everyday conservatory life that the first year students, and not only them, have difficulties in yet determining single intervals. The depressing consequence is that ear training, often over semesters, has to consist, has to consist of elementary exercises recognizing interval scales seventh chords, a burden for as well for the pupil, who must consider this training as being far away from music, as for the teacher. This was the, what is the consequence he, he describes. Do, do you want to translate? Yes. Uno delle, sempre in questo libro, da cui era tratta anche la citazione precedente, che è diffusissimo in area tedesca, è che una delle, delle realtà 
della, di tutti i giorni della, della vita dei conservatori è che spesso gli studenti nelle classi di altri hanno a che fare con esercizi che riguardano semplici aspetti, questo è il senso delle, delle training modulari, cioè hanno a che fare con intervalli, con scale, con accordi, ma niente che sia direttamente correlato a un discorso musicale. So that's the situation in ear training, measuring intervals, uh, training um, simulating a course and being far away from music and I think that students who feel, as we see here, are right to feel so because they are really far away from music. And this, I, I don't know why, uh, is a result of, of the pre-assumption that our um, perception means a sum of little details. And that's not true. And so it cannot be the consequence for the lesson to give only these elementary exercises as important as they are. You have to know intervals, you have to analyze single course, you have to do it when, when you want to be professional. But it does not lead us consequently to perception of musical context. So this is only one direction, it's not enough. And this, I think, is, is the mistake and the misunderstanding in this argumentation. And this argumentation, I, I, I talk about this so much because it's so deep in the minds of my students that really it is very difficult to get rid of this. It's their expectation to my lessons and to ear training in common um, and, and it's not easy to get out. So this popular belief in melody being a sum of interval distances from note uh, is a popular belief. They think when I have a melody I have to perceive this as interval from note to note to note. Also when I sing It's the same problem when producing melody by outside reading. Sicuramente negli atteni noi abbiamo a che fare con intervalli, con accordi e dobbiamo riconoscere anche queste strutture e allenarci per farlo. Ma non è questo che ci porta a comprendere il contesto musicale di ciò che ascoltiamo e le relazioni che ci sono all'interno di una frase musicale. È una credenza abbastanza diffusa che negli studenti di art training nel mondo tedesco che una melodia sia, non sia altro che la somma di tanti intervalli uno dopo l'altro. Questo porta a spezzettare la, la melodia in elementi, torniamo ai moduli di cui parlava Erika all'inizio, e, e senza capire quali sono le relazioni fra queste, queste note che formano la melodia all'interno del contesto complessivo di tutta la frase melodica. So in school it's very popular in Germany to teach intervals by recognition of, of um, an association with the beginnings of folk tunes. So we saw in, in, in Björn's talk today of such a list. Am I right? Do I remember right? So it's very common to do this because it works. You have on the one hand this very abstract name of the interval, on the other hand you have concrete music you can associate with, so this works. This leads to a first correlation of terminology and sound imagination and this is positive, of course, that's why it's, it's used so often by teachers and they feel successful because they, they want their pupils to, to recognize the fourth. Un sistema molto popolare di insegnamento è quello di correlare ciascun intervallo all'inizio di una canzone o di un brano ben conosciuto e questo permette di mettere in relazione una terminologia, una nomenclatura astratta come terza minore discendente, per esempio, con qualcosa che noi abbiamo in mente eh, di ben conosciuto, come ad esempio, che ne so, eh, l'inizio di Hey Jude. E quindi, e questo qui è un aspetto positivo, perché quindi comunque noi stiamo correlando qualcosa di estremamente astratto con qualcosa di concreto che fa parte del vissuto della, della lingua. But, no. <laughs> <laughs> notlessly, the simplest possible degree combination of the interval is being learned and not the interval itself. And because at the beginning of a tune there are characteristic intervals to show that mostly the, the tonic triad and, and the tonic, the to first five degrees of the, of the tonic scale, so it's the most simple Um, the most simple situation where this interval can occur, but 
we heard it can occur everywhere in a scale. And so when we have this, um, when we learn this combination instead of the interval, we have a problem when contextualizing uh, later. Di fatto noi ci stiamo occupando non dell'intervallo in sé veramente, ci stiamo occupando della sua forma più semplice, cioè di quando appare all'inizio di un brano, cosa che nella maggior parte dei casi è correlata a una situazione dell'intervallo su un accordo di tonico, su una situazione armonica molto semplice. E basta che lo stesso intervallo si presenti con una situazione armonica diversa e noi non lo riconosciamo più l'intervallo ha già cambiato completamente colore proprio perché è cambiato il contesto infatti il limite di questo metodo è che non tiene conto del contesto the context is not taken into account in this kind yes. of work you, you can see in, in all sonization uh, uh, tractats about all so, uh, ancient sonization ut, re, mi, fa, sol, la the intervals ut, re and the re, mi which are from the point of view of German music three major second, both different intervals because of the ut being the most important note and this is being forgotten and this is disturbing at the end. Si tende a dimenticare che uh, do e re e re e mi pur essendo entrambe due seconde maggiore all'interno di una scala maggiore hanno funzioni e colore completamente diverso mentre da un punto di vista di questo tipo di didattica sono semplicemente una seconda maggiore. Sì. So my students at the beginning desperately, really desperately try to measure interval after interval because they believe it has to be so. This is music dictation. It's their notion of music dictation. They ignore what they naturally feel and what they naturally have in mind. They think they have to do so. so and it's really impossible um, to say don't do, use another strategy because it's a very strong belief. They measure interval after interval and do not notice that are, they are not dealing with distances, but with changes of tonality, no, they know, because they do not hear distances. So what they imagine to be hearing of single intervals is, is in reality hearing of tone functions in tonality. In the simplest possible tonality, this means sometimes changing tonality in my mind from note to note. And this is leading away from music, fall prone, lot of faults, it's confusing and it's totally exhausting. But they, are, they are really exhausted by poor, stu my poor students when they try in this way. This cannot be the right strategy, but I must say it's not easy to, to, to uh, bring them to others because this belief is so strong. The problem of this strategy is that spesso the students sono alla disperata ricerca di misurare un intervallo dopo l'altro e senza rendersi conto che non stanno semplicemente calcolando la distanza da un intervallo all'altro ma ogni volta che da una successiva nota della melodia cercano di capire qual è la nota che viene ancora dopo in realtà stanno considerando quella nota come tonica quindi ogni volta è come se stessero cambiando tonalità questo se io considero Do e Re e l'ho memorizzata come l'inizio di un brano in cui Do e Re sono il primo e il secondo grado della scala, quando devo riconoscere Re Mi e applico lo stesso ragionamento, è come se stessi ragionando in Re maggiore, il che è una cosa assolutamente folle. Questa cosa qui, oltre che essere estremamente stancante, eh, porta anche a confusione all'allievo perché non riesce a cogliere le relazioni fra, fra i vari gradi, fra le varie note della melodia. Instead, I try to make them work with the existing greater contest. This can be the scale, this can be other part of the scale, this um, depends on, on the, on the um, concrete melody and the concrete music. And this uh, from the very start? Uh, okay. This from the very start? Of yes, of course. It's the principle of the work to make this clear. So they shall recognize the note, the concrete note, not by its distance to the previous because you can recognize in tonality a note without having the note before. You can know the, the, the final note without ten notes before. It's no problem because you recognize it's, 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 uh, it's the final note of the piece. So it's not necessary to have, have one after the other. And it's, it's a big fear in students to have, when I lose one note, um, I cannot go on. And that's not true when you are in tonality, of course. So it, it should um, bring some relaxation. 
So not by its distance to the previous, but by its function in relation to this greater context. Who's it? Can be tonal context. Is it, context is will it be at the beginning, but it can also quasi tonal context when it's when it's a free tonal or atonal dictation. Oh, here we will we will work with musical shapes in the same way. It's somewhat more difficult to find them out, but they exist in the same way. And when you are when when you know an atonal melody, it is a shape for you and not a sum of intervals. Never. E quindi lei fin dall'inizio lavora con un contesto più grande dell'intervallo, che può essere la scala o una sezione della scala. Quindi riconoscendo eh, la nota, le note della melodia, non dalla distanza rispetto alla nota precedente, quindi non misurando un intervallo dopo l'altro, ma dalla funzione che ha nel contesto che, della, di riferimento che noi stiamo prendendo, la scala o una sezione di scala, materiale che può essere tonale, poco tonale o anche atonale. Quindi eh, lavorando con strutture musicali, con colline, non con singole note. Mm -hmm. So when I reach this that they work in the music and not with this abstract abstraction of music, they will stay in their musical emotion while you're training. It's a very, very big difference and I hope that in time they will find to know new notions about what ear training is. Because ear training is interesting and it's, it's having fun uh, and really. <laughs> and it's, it's finding out things about music, learning to know music. So I have often students after three years come and say, oh, I, I so appreciate, appreciate it to go to ear training because of the lots of, lots of beautiful music I learned to know. And that's what I, what I want my students to see, ear training, something to, to learn interesting things and to experience the own ear and not to do silly, silly abstract exercises without any sense, without any musical sense. This, why? In questo modo lo studente riesce a continuare a lavorare con la musica, correlando ciò che fa all'aspetto musicale e all'aspetto emozionale della musica. Quindi la e vedi il lavoro di ear training come qualcosa che gli fa capire meglio la musica e il lavoro diventa anche decisamente più piacevole oltre che redditizia. Ok, so very important point for me is in, in, um, in contrast to what Kuhn wrote at the beginning to treat and to estimate my students generally as well talented young musicians and not as music beginners. Uh, to, to reduce them to such beginners um, beginners' exercises also reduces them as persons, and they don't like this, especially in, with 18, 19, 20 years at this age, young adults, it's impossible to do. And I must say, they are not musical laymen, they are all fine young people, intelligent and very well talented, so I have no reason to, to, to treat them uh, like, like silly, silly persons who cannot learn. So I know they have a very fine musical and a developed musical intuition. They are fine instrumentalists or fine singers. They are talented. So I try, I try to work with them from this point of view. Of course, they are lacking some, some things, but they are not, not uh, music beginners. And this is very important. It makes a big difference in work. When you work with musical laymen, you have to learn the music in the same, uh, in the same way. They have learned music intuitively. Di avere un atteggiamento con gli allievi nei confronti degli allievi, vederli come eh, musicisti di talento giovani, non come principianti, anche perché spesso sono allievi che sul proprio strumento hanno delle abilità notevoli, mancano semplicemente delle, delle parti nella loro formazione, ma non trattarli sempre come principianti come esercizi, con esercizi da principianti che non, non giovano alla loro formazione. And so I try to equalize the existing disbalance between advanced instrumental skills and good music, uh, musical intuition and beginner skills in music theory and ear training as far as ever possible in the three years. So I, I, I must say in, in some cases I really manage, not in all, but, but I'm not so unhappy. With this. And I try, of course, to develop there the students' consciousness of the important, or importance of yet lacking ear training skills out of the motivation for music. So they shall find out it's interesting for me 
to be a better musician, to have a better developed ear. And with, with training of abstract music uh, elements, I will not reach this. But the most important for them is to be motivated to, to, to the training they have to do. Because there is a frustrating disbalance and they feel this, so I have to motivate them. And what really helps is to, to get this motivation out of the music. Quindi lo scopo del corso è anche quello di uh, portare a eliminare le differenze nella preparazione fra, una, fra le abilità strumentali che magari sono molto elevate e invece conoscenze di teoria musicale e uh, relative all'air training che sono invece limitate, facendo anche crescere negli allievi la consapevolezza che un migliore orecchio musicale, un'abilità un abilità più elevate negli air training li porteranno ad essere migliori musicisti. So I begin with this, so with a scale, and this is a typical German image for the scale, because in, in German this is named Tonata, ladder of tones, and this of course is a very stiff thing. Yeah? And so for, for real ladder I will prefer the steps to be with the same distance, but of course we know it's not so and then I show and explain major and minor scale and they have to know in mind how it feels and how the degrees feel. Lei parte con una immagine molto comune, quella della, della scala, later, un po' come later in, in, uh, in inglese, la nostra scala anche manda direttamente all'immagine della scala e quindi parte come prima immagine, chiaro, con i gradini tutti uguali come accade in una normale scala poi invece c'è la differenziazione delle, delle diverse ampiezze fra i diversi intervalli come accade invece nelle diverse scale. Ok, and, and one can make exercises, I do at the beginning, if it's necessary for, for the students, um, exercising with the scale. You can also do it on the board. We can now try out. So this is more like a scale. Uh, okay, I think the, red one, the black one is better. Black one is better. And I wanted the red one. <laughs> it's, it's always special with your, with your pencils here. Every year you say, Elke, take the blue one, take the green one. Not one, the one I took. The other one will be better. Every year the same. Yes, yes. Some the power board effect. Some things never change. So it is. Okay. This shall be a major scale. Uh, can you sing with me? Da, da, da. This is one, this is five, so we had seven, okay, so most important note is one, of course, and this is like a magnet for all, and the intervals are positioned between the degrees of the scale, but they are not positioned absolutely. And this is what was so important to understand. They are inside. Intervals are existing. You have to know them. So it, you have to practice them, but you have to, to know that they exist in several places. Okay. L'intervallo non è solamente una misura assoluta di distanza fra due suoni, ma questi due suoni sono inseriti all'interno di un contesto più grande che quello della scala. Okay. Um, you sing. Do you remember? And a lot of songs begin. Okay. So you can do this exercise in the one hand for, for sight reading, of course, and you can do it while recognizing, yeah, to, to transport what you have in mind from the melody into this system with a feeling for one, five, these are the most important notes, and three. Uh, and that's why mostly, uh, I, I said it in the, in the last talk, melody does not begin here. 
on the second degree or on the sixth degree, but mostly does begin on one, three, and five. And these other three degrees, you, you should have a very, very sure feeling for. Do you know the same thing in, in minor? Are you able to sing in minor? Uh, <laughs> this was a mixture in my major and minor. So the sixth degree in, in minor is really very, very special. And this brings me to, to a little um, example I wanted to show with the interval um, with the interval question and I forgot but I can show it now. Come I said earlier, many of the brani are with the first and the fifth grade. This is also one of the reasons for which the grades that we have to have always ready in the mind when we think about the structure of the scale. Okay, when you hear this interval, which interval is it? Six. Six. Okay, then listen. Do you understand what I mean? Yes. So, in, in truth, it's a diminished 7 because I'm in, in minor. This was a 6 degree. 6 and 7 degree, very, very strong tone functions in minor. And we can feel it very strong, but when hearing this without context, we would never, never, never think this to be a diminished 7. Never. So, so when you try to sing it as a 6, it will be a catastrophe. Of course, eh? but it's natural to have first this simple possible interpretation as third and uh, three and five in major, because major is nearer to us. That's why this interval um, the tune singing is so successful on the one hand and so dangerous on the other hand. That's what I, what I wanted to show. So you can, you can make exercises like these. They are really funny. <laughs> okay. And L'anno allo stesso intervallo, come avete visto, è una sesta maggiore o una settima diminuita a seconda del contesto. E io devo avere qualche problema perché avevo sentito la settima diminuita. Quindi probabilmente <laughs> <laughs> basta il San Chapos perché ho avuto il diminuito. E questo è anche il motivo per cui l'intervallo da solo, senza il contesto, non ha qualcosa di pericoloso in alcune situazioni. I can give another example, not a more soft example for this, so with the same interval, when I have it in this context. Okay, this is the same interval, so I, I do not lose now the, the identity of the interval, I know this is me. <laughs> but, but I love this, this example. Okay, did you feel, now I, in this tonality and my notes, are not three and five, but two and four. And when you know are singing or writing a melody with this interval and making it so small that you think this, you are out of this tonality. This is what I wanted to explain. It will not function. It will bring you out of tonality. And you have to learn the intervals inside the tonality. And the, the most important notes in tonality are one, three, and five. We heard a lot about this in the morning because they are so important. Che l'esempio che ho fatto ora dimostra che gli intervalli vanno imparati in relazione alla la tonalità e non e non separati da essa perché acquistano colori diversi in base alla loro funzione. Okay, so one of the biggest fear factors for my students is. Will I find the first note of the dictation? Do you know this from the dictation? Or are you given always the first note? So we in Basel, we never give the beginning note. Uh, in the entrance exam, we give not the beginning note of the dictation. It's very small and very simple, but we give the tonality. Sometimes we can give only the beginning note. In each case, it has to be found out on which degrees, on which degree, the melody begins. Normalmente and loro non, non, non rivelano all'allievo qual è la prima nota del, di un dettato. Viene data semplicemente la tonalità, ma non la prima nota. So, want to try out? This I, I do always at the beginning because we, it, it brings some relaxation from this stress with the beginning note because once you have found out how it feels, 
first degree, third degree, fifth degree, you, you will get a feeling. I, I'm not able to describe, as Björn asked in the morning, can you describe? And I can't, but I know what it is some way. So we try out, it's okay. Spesso è difficile riuscire a descrivere qual è la sensazione del primo, del terzo, del quinto grado. Non per questo, magari noi invece l'abbiamo, non riusciamo a descrivere la parola, ma riusciamo a, a distinguerla nettamente a livello, a livello di sensazione. Ok. I do not have sound. Try now, okay. Which degree? How long how long did it last that you knew? Two seconds. So long. Uh -huh. It's major or minor, the tonality? Major, it's clear. So please note how fast this go and, and how small the cognition part of this recognition is. You are, when, when the composer wants you to be in tonality, you are in immediately. It's less than one second, milliseconds. So when he does not want to make clear, it's other situation at the beginning of some alternatives or so, but here I have only clear situations with a, which are typical. Okay, this Beethoven, Eroica, actually. Can you read this? The, uh, or it's too, too small to read? No, no, it's, it's, it's okay, you can read. Uh, ci sono situazioni in cui il compositore desidera farci capire immediatamente il contesto e qui è questione veramente di pochi attimi e in pochissimo noi siamo in grado di capire qual è la tonica, qual è il modo dove ci troviamo, qual è la prima nota. E questo è uno di questi casi. Ok, second. stop here. So what, what is our tonality? Can you sing the scale? And the degree of beginning was? Fifth. So it's so clear. Huh? One has not to be afraid of this. So it functions immediately. We are all trained from our childhood, from, from, the, from the songs our mother sang for us to these very basic things of melody. So it is no need to be nervous of this. It's really very natural, very clear. Okay. Perhaps in piano music it's other thing. We will find out. Can you sing the tonality? This was the beginning note, which degree? Third, of course. Do you see it? It becomes faster and faster and faster. Relax. It's, it's so easy. One more? One more. So, major or minor? Yes. <laughs> we know it all, okay. So it's minor, it's clear, and after, after milliseconds, and it was the first degree, because Brahms wanted to be clear here. Of course he is clear. Quindi è chiaro cosa stiamo facendo ogni volta che c'è un inizio, bastano pochi elementi per farci capire qual è la tonalità, qual è la tonica, e da qui riuscire a ricavarci qual è la nota, in, la nota iniziale su quale grado della scala uh, si trova. Quindi già con, pochi, con pochissimi secondi di musica, nel momento in cui lei interrompe, spesso noi siamo già in grado di identificare la tonica, anche dopo aver sentito pochissime note, e riuscire a capire all'interno della scala su quale grado è iniziato il brano. Beginning degree, three, in minor. Not so often found, but it exists. It's Max Bruch, or here. Perhaps in the rock it was of other things. No, it was a 
He started from the tonic and to each of yes. the okay. first night. But he plays. <laughs> this is doing this. Examples. So I will proceed now. You see, to find the beginning is not so complicated because it is clear. You can trust in your intuition because the scale, what you have to learn as students is to be conscious what is what. But the scale itself is inside you since years, since your childhood. So you can trust on this. Do not leave this trust. It's the most important you can do. Trust on what you hear. Okay. Che noi già abbiamo e non è qualcosa che debba implicare uno sforzo particolare per, per riconoscerlo. Quindi l'atteggiamento di, di molti studenti di dire oddio adesso qual è la prima nota è qualcosa che ha come effetto l'esatto opposto, quella di bloccare eh, la, la nostra capacità di riconoscere. Se ci affidiamo invece a quello che è un riconoscimento naturale dell'abito tonale in cui siamo, diventa molto più facile correlare eh, all'interno di queste relazioni che si creano fra i vari gradi della scala la nota iniziale. So when we are dealing with the whole melody, it does not stay as simple as it was at the beginning. And so this is very important for me, I want to explain. So the melody perception also, also when it's only a single line melody, which is seldom, of course, in composed music, melody perception is never purely horizontal. What I mean, we implicate harmonies all the time without being conscious. We can, can get conscious of other words, but we do all the time. And so all melody notes we hear have at least double definitions. So they are horizontally defined as degrees of at least one scale. So this can be two scales at the same time in, in case of a dominant or other standard modulation. But so at least one scale. Horizontal, horizontal definition, or vertically as component of the temporary harmony. I will show, show, uh, explain why by um, la per, examples. La percezione di una melodia non è mai un fenomeno completamente orizzontale, perché la melodia implica, sottintende sempre un'armonia. E quindi ogni nota della melodia ha sempre un ruolo doppio, un ruolo orizzontale, che è qualcosa di, di una serie di gradi di una scala che si che evolvono uno dopo l'altro. È un ruolo verticale come una, un componente, cioè un fattore, un elemento dell'armonia che c'è, dell'accordo dell'armonia che c'è in quel momento. Yes, for example, when I hear in D major. So I have this dominant chord in it. And so these notes are two. Four, five, seven. For the scale, horizontal definition. At the same time, they are five, seven, one, three for the chord. They are both. And le, le ultime quattro note del brano che ha fatto, oltre a essere il secondo, il quarto, il quinto e il settimo della scala, formano anche un accordo di, di settima di dominante. E quindi possono essere visti sì come il secondo, il quarto quinto e settimo grado della scala, ma anche come la quinta, la settima, la fondamentale e la terza di un accordo di settima di nominale. Can you give this round to all? I will show all examples also here, but it, it can be... Yes, if possible, 70, 70 copies. So generally, this effect I showed depends on, on the tempo of the harmonic progression. The slower the harmonic progression is, the stronger you feel this vertical definition of the notes. And this can be confusing when you are not experienced with it. It can give you another fundamental note immediately, and this can be really confusing. And this also depends on the hearing type of the students. 
because students are not all the same. And so there are students who are from the natural, um, natural orientation, more horizontal. These are often violinists and singers. And there are guitarists and percussionists often more vertically orientated. This means so, so this harmonic, temporary harmonic is very strong in their mind even when it's not so long. For the more horizontally orientated hearers, it must be very long that they feel this more than the other. Okay, ci sono diversi fattori che influenzano come noi percepiamo ogni singola nota della melodia. Se è più legata a un fatto orizzontale o più legata a un fatto verticale. I fattori messi in evidenza qui sono principalmente due. Uno, la velocità con cui cambiano le accorde, quello che noi in Italia chiamiamo il ritmo armonico. Quindi più è lento il ritmo armonico e maggiore è il senso verticale che noi sentiamo in ogni singola nota. Cioè se lo stesso accordo dura per molto tempo, noi tendiamo ad attribuire a ciascuna nota di questo accordo un ruolo all'interno dell'accordo. E l'altro aspetto è legato alla tipologia dello studente. Ci sono studenti che hanno una percezione più legata a un fattore orizzontale. E gli esempi qui fatti sono uh, cantanti, violinisti, chi è abituato a suonare uno strumento solista e, e spesso in un, uno strumento a cui è fidata una melodia. Okay? Più verticale per uh, percussionisti, batteristi e chitarristi, perché il chitarrista ha più a che fare con un mondo legato a una ritmica di accordi, il percussionista è più abituato ad avere un pensiero legato a una struttura armonica, che a una struttura ritmica che spesso è legata al ritmo armonico, quindi a come cambiano gli accordi. E questo qui lo porta ad essere più interessato ad un pensiero verticale di accordi che non a un orizzontale melodico. As due to my opinion, the difficulties in harmonic hearings to, to one part result from this effect, because students expect themselves only to hear this when they want to hear a chord, but at the same time all notes are also part of a horizontal level and they feel both at the same time and there's so much information they get overwhelmed by it. And this is this feeling of, oh, it's too much for me to analyze this chord. So, spesso le aspettative di ogni singolo studente hanno come effetto che lui si aspetta una, una sola di queste due tipologie, mentre quando arriva l'informazione le contiene entrambe, e questo crea confusione. Tchaikovsky's famous first piano concerto, my students love and, and, and know all, so it's, it's quite a beautiful melody and it's, until here, it's purely diatonic. But it turns out to be really difficult because of these harmonic functions inside, especially this part here. So the, the, the harmonics, uh, harmonic rhythm is very, very slow, it's tonic, second degree, uh, fifth degree, one, the, the, over and over and uh, pedal, in the bass it's like an uh, opening okay. canvas. Nonostante la melodia sia molto semplice, l'armonia sia molto semplice e il ritmo armonico sia molto lento, e come vediamo gli accordi sono primo, secondo, quinto e primo, molto distanziati uno dall'altro, e, e sia un brano amato dai suoi studenti, eh, comporta grandissime difficoltà nel momento in cui devono andare già a scriverlo, perché ci sono zone, come vedete dalla quarta battuta in avanti, in cui ciascuna di, de, delle situazioni create dalla melodia possono creare a loro volta delle strutture armoniche. Yes, and here in this, in this region especially it becomes difficult for the students because here the subdominant is always leading us away from the tonic, while the dominant is leading us back. So dominant, long dominant functions are more easy to be 
uh, to be analyzed than lung subdominant uh, situation. And so here they get really, really difficulties because there are two definitions of the notes in the melody at the same time. I wrote it over. It's, it's really so that this gives difficulties. Um, similar, it is quite similar, it is here in this example. of the highest quality, but I love this old Rubinstein recording song. I love it as pianist, I <laughs> can say it is so. So here, it's the same case, also a composed second degree. This is easier for my students to understand because there is this alterated note D, which is not D flat. And so this, this, this region of, of uh, mi bemol, mi minore, is more shown. And so they have, ah, okay, it changes and they find out easier. But it's, it's, in some way it's, it's a similar situation. And this always takes place, place in melody, um, melody dictation. The existing, the, maybe the existing accompaniment or the accompaniment we do in our mind. But I'm convinced we, we are not able to have tonal melody without accompaniment in our minds. It will be the simplest possible, but we always will associate something to it. Uh, I beg your pardon, uh, where, where is here the conflict between uh, the two vertical and horizontal? Here. Because uh, this you will hear in B, in B bemol minor and no longer in Re, in re bemol major. Okay. But it will be easier than here due to my, uh, due to my experience with this. And I think that the reason is um, that the bass note changes is one of the reasons, and that there is this D natural leading as leading note there in a new yes, harmonic yeah. region. Yeah. 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 Yes. And we have to help our students and to say, look here, it's so, and your your words, your feeling for the fundamental pitch will change in this region in this characteristic way. It cannot be all note be. Um, correlated to the to a single first degree. That's what I mean. It's, it's okay so? Good. Okay, other problem while dictation is how to manage big skips. Come gestire i salti melodici molto ampi. not an easy example because it's rhythmically not so easy. Can you sing with me the melody? Will you hear once more sing with me and try out? You can read a little bit as you have. Yes. But we, we hear once more then we sing. This yes, so you find out easily after our beginning note training that it begins on the fifth degree, of course. Even when you have brought the hand out, you would know this, of course. And then you can put it out, you, you can put it into two levels. So they are like two levels and every one of this level is quite linear and not full of skin full of skips questo è un caso emblematico di quando ci sono molti salti presenti all'interno della stessa linea melodica può essere più logico e conveniente come in questo caso pensarlo come due linee quindi come qui il 
nell'esempio nell del handout che mi è stato dato, la linea viene scissa appunto in due parti, una più grave e, e un'altra invece più acuta. Prese così singolarmente ciascuna di queste due linee parallele è dotata di molto senso ed è eh, soprattutto molto più facile da, da decifrare, da comprendere perché comporta l'utilizzo di intervalli molto più semplici, molto più vicini. Mm -hmm. When you look at the whole melody you see how complicated here with this septima, six, six, septima, diminished fifth, six. And all these intervals you, you need not to measure when you work with this quality of your ear. This is very, very important. It's so Pensando much more efficient. Parallele, non avete più questa necessità di uh, pensare continuamente a questi intervalli di sesta, settima, quinta diminuita e così via. Ma ciascuna delle due linee che la formano è estremamente logica con intervalli molto più avvicinati. But I, I must confess, I do practice this with my students every time when I come with an example with this, you, you say dead intervals, isn't it? So I have it from Catherine, that does the Toten interval or dead intervals, so I never thought to kill the intervals, but indeed I do as you do. Um, so I, I must confess, when I practice this with my students, they are always totally happy and it's so fast and it's so efficient when I let them alone. So, so, so it's, it's work in progress to, to have this consciousness. But perhaps you can see it's, it's the most natural and efficient way as we prefer to be in one level of pitches with the ear. We tend to have such implemented two-voice two music. Bach's violin partitas could not have been uh, written without this ability of our ear. So we can use this for dictation and get out a lot of stress with big skips. Molti brani di fatto presentano questa struttura su due livelli e questo può essere molto utile nel momento in cui noi andiamo, cioè riuscire a comprenderlo ci aiuta moltissimo nel momento in cui dobbiamo trascrivere. Il problema che posso tenere a me è che i studenti in classe con lei lavorano molto bene con questo sistema, ma spesso lasciati da soli continuano a cercare di, di, di misurare e continuare a decifrare il singolo. Sometimes the structure is not so, so clear to, to the student's eyes. Perhaps, perhaps. So another aspect I want to show um, what's more with the same um, example I have with this uh, Chopin piano sonata. And I um, don't know what piano is with you. So when we look to the accompaniment. So the accompaniment of the sonata so I give this in the, in the third year, not for the beginners, as a, first as a melody dictation which they enjoy because it's not, not complicated for them and it's very easy to, to be kept in mind and so it's, it's a quite nice melody. But then this this chord so this is they have to deal with the accompaniment. Yeah, yes. Okay. Yes, and this is it's quite interesting because we can in questo caso la, lo studente è... Lo studente che ha dato l'indicazione di scrivere la parte dell'accompagnamento. Ok. So this is a melody itself, we heard it before. And then I can take together four notes of the accompaniment to one chord impression. Ok, quindi questa è la, la, la melodia che abbiamo visto anche prima. A questo punto io posso considerare le quattro note, cioè prendere le note dell'accompagnamento quattro per volta e considerarle come componenti di un accordo non senza aver bisogno di avere a che fare con i singoli intervalli all'interno, cioè tra una nota e l'altra della compagnia. Because first of all we are able to have sequential notes to put it vertical and to imagine as one chord. Di prendere sequenze di note orizzontali e riuscire ad avere la capacità astrattiva di pensarli verticalmente come un accordo unico. And then I can think this accompaniment like a four voice, standard four voice setting with a soprano voice here, with an alto voice, tenor voice, quindi, bass voice. Just listen. E quindi vedere l'accompagnamento in realtà come se fosse una scrittura a quattro voci. Cioè prendere questo arpeggio, verticalizzarlo e immaginarlo come la classica scrittura a quattro voci, soprano, contralto, tenore e basso. You can hear. Try, take one of the voices and try to focus out, you will see you will manage to do this because you are able to, to hear in these levels of future. So I 
untouchable if it is. So this ability is over here. I think it's better we try again. I think it's better if we try again. Try again? Once yes. more? Once more. Okay, once more. Of course, no problem. Okay, sorry. It was not done to the beginning. such figurations not to measure skip after after skip this will be really really hard work and this is much more natural <coughs> and much more efficient if you are courageous to do of course it's at least some courage to, to let this control from note to note away to say oh what do I hear and I think this is the most important questa tendenza a cantare i singoli intervalli e invece a considerare tutte queste le quattro note che formano l'arpeggio come delle linee eh, orizzontali. Mm -hmm. So I find this very fascinating in, in which levels we can hear and to my opinion this is really the most natural way of dealing with this and we can see that Chopin must have thought in terms of a four voice standard setting here. We can see it nearly through the whole piece that it's, it's dealt like with a standard voice leading of a four voice setting. And so knowing about this can help to, to have a solution of this exercise. La consapevolezza di questo aiuta sicuramente ad arrivare comunque a una, a una soluzione più rapida e migliore del, di questo esercizio. Perché io penso alla singola linea e non al, al singolo intervallo. Mm -hmm. Other interesting field is focusing. We had it in the morning too, of course, of course. So here, this I, I brought, I think, in the first year I was here as a dictation. Brahms. constructed this melody with, with this um, um, augmentations and diminution was always the same motivic material and, and to deal with minor. So this is the first part of this questo long period uh in which we construed the this first movement and notando come c'è questa specie di diminuzione per certi versi rispetto alla fase iniziale che poi unicamente viene viene compressa. And and of course my students uh, recognize this as a periodic structure and the violins repeating nearly the, the, the same music as the violoncelli played but once over here which means opening and closing in a period structure. The students in general recognize that this is a period of two phases in which in the second phase the violins repeat what they have done with the first violoncelli with a different closure. Then I ask what about the violoncello when the violins begin? The normal what happens is 
So focus goes to the units, and we know nothing about the jelly. That's why I wrote it in this way. And even when we try to find out what the cello plays, it will be not so easy, especially with a fat romantic orchestra. So with Norrington, it's, it's somewhat easier because it's more transparent. But as, as the cello line is going into this, in the frequency area of this um, harmonic carpet of these figurations, it's not easy to be heard out. And then I start an experiment, nemlich sing. Spesso il, la parte di violoncelli non è semplice mm -hmm. perché è in una gamma di frequenze dove nell'orchestra romantica ci sono tantissimi altri strumenti e questo non, non aiuta, è una zona piena di armoniche e di altri strumenti e quindi è difficile stare alla parte. Cosa invece che è più semplice nel caso della, della stessa frase eseguita dai violini. Ok, can you now sing with me the cello line from here? Yeah, da 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 just we repeat. Can you sing once more with me? And I want you to hear more. I heard myself. But it shall not be facile. We will learn how it is. Okay. Or should we sing once more? Uh, as they look, I think we should sing once more. Okay. <laughs> yes, <I did. laughs> So, so they have like a bandpass filter in their brains over the frequencies they get into the ear and their brain is making another interpretation of what they hear. And this is really interesting by both because most of them don't know about this ability they have. A questo punto è più facile riuscire a focalizzarsi sulla linea del, del violoncello, cosa che prima era molto più difficoltosa. E spesso gli studenti sono i primi a stupirsene. Questa, di questo fatto perché prima il violoncello era qualcosa che non riuscivano a disolare. And then 
I can follow up this by an exercise with a, a Bach choral setting. Um, and this here, this setting here is a fake made by me. It could be from Bach, but it is not from Bach. So I made a standard setting, to have the soprano and the bass from the, from the Bach setting. And then I let the students sing what I wrote and compare to what they hear. So we, we test it with the beginning. The, the first, uh, the first, the first, line first is first. wrong. Hmm? What, is, what is wrong? No, I, I'm sorry, I didn't understand what is uh, the aim of the exercise. So the aim is focusing, training and focusing, and uh, according to the hypothesis, you hear what you know. So I made a falsification, a falsification of this chorus setting. So, so the melody is the original melody, the bass line is the original bass line from the Bach setting, but the middle voices I wrote due to my setting knowledge. So, so it should not be full of uh, parallels or, or such. It could be so, but it is not from Bach. And so we have something to compare. Will we try out with the, with the first line? But it's focusing middle voices. Okay. You hear what you know. Si sente ciò che si conosce, quindi in base anche alla propria conoscenza riuscire a identificare e riconoscere le parti centrali, una volta che quella superiore e quella inferiore sono date. Ok, so first line, go up, sorry, go back. Yes. Ok, now you are in tonality. Can you sing the alto voice please? Si può provare a cantare le altre voci? Alto voice. E la parte del contralto? Ok, as it's written here in my hypothesis. Così come è scritta qui. Oh, perfetto. Is it right? It's the same as in Bach? È giusta. È veramente come è così nella registrazione. Ok, try to find out. What is the difference? Can you can you sing the difference? Uh, once again, if it's possible. I don't understand. Once again. Once again. Once again. Okay. okay, this I understand. Okay. <laughs> this I know. to be right. Okay, can you sing the tenor, please? Adesso cantiamo il tenore, il tenore ha buone probabilità di essere giusto. Okay, are you sure? What's more? from the teacher because students take their time to focus. First of all, melody and bars are so much more present. It's no harm. Please, please don't tempo, worry about this. Ci vuole tempo per permettere allo studente di riuscire a estrarre questa singola parte perché spesso ci si riesce a focalizzare solamente sulle parti estreme, cioè la mm -hmm. parte yes. del soprano o la parte del basso. Yes. Ma molto più difficilmente su quelle intermedie. Okay, so normally in a normal lesson first they sing the whole focus setting with my falsification to, to work this way, this, this first focus, and then it's easier. But it always takes time, but it's worth to take this time. And to have, sometimes you need 10 or 20 repetitions, and then one of the students, ah, 
There it is. There it is. It needs time, so please don't worry when it's not money managing in the, in the first moment. It's no harm. È un lavoro per il quale non bisogna avere fretta perché spesso a volte sono necessarie 10, 15, 20 ripetizioni della, della stessa frase finché uno studente all'improvviso si illumina e sente qualcosa che non aveva sentito nelle esecuzioni precedenti, soprattutto quando riguarda la parte, una delle parti centrali. We try once more. We try once more. So it's really an interesting exercise, and I never, never, never experienced my students being uh, frustrated with this. So you need, when you teach this, you need really, um, at the beginning, sometimes it, it's not, you cannot say, but I hear, there, yeah, it's so clear. <laughs> Because you, you, cannot, you cannot put the focus of the students as you want. You can sing and help them, but, but they have to find it on their own. Okay, with the special needs una buona cosa mettere fretta all'allievo perché ci sono dei tempi se è necessario a prevedere un buon numero a volte un elevatissimo numero di ripetizione per permettere all'allievo di entrare all'interno di un tessuto polifonico come questo per riuscire a cogliere le informazioni che stiamo cercando ok I will come to an end so, so can I show one last example So another thing, not focusing, but summarizing, can be also interesting. Um, but to take to take uh, three voices as one thing, and here is very nice example for this. Un esempio per questo è quello di taking three voices. Three voices as one chord and as one thing. Here it's very well possible. You will hear. Considerare tre voci come un singolo accordo. So you can imagine, so all I, I students play piano with the three uh, uh, wind players. Can you imagine how they play? Is it so? Or is it more so? Can you associate some, something? I didn't understand that. So when I have to write this, I can try to focus out first flute and the oboe and the fagots. Yes, as I learned to focus in the, in the former exercise. But I can do the opposite here and to say these are chord structures and, and I can do every chord as one thing. So when I look to the beginning chord... It's an exercise of the same way to the one that we did before. Yes. And then to consider the contrary strategy. Yes, of course. Of course, we can both. And we shall use both, to my opinion. Just try with the beginning chord. Andiamo con il chord iniziale. Afterwards, as I cannot sing three voices at the time, but it's possible to have it as one, as one thing, and this is possible over over wide parts of this piece, and in the cadences where it becomes polyphonic, you will change your strategy and become focused. Possibile immaginarlo come se fosse al pianoforte, capire qual è l'accordo risultante dalla somma di queste tre voci, di questi tre fianchi, cioè il primo flauto, il flauto oboe e il fagotto. E trattarlo come se fosse un accordo. È il contrario del lavoro che abbiamo fatto prima in pratica. Cioè le, le tre voci concorrono alla formazione di un singolo accordo che noi percepiamo come tale e che andiamo a cantare uh, nell'ordine, cioè nello stato in cui è l'accordo. 
Faz um show. Because here is an old an old collar. This is the strategy my students do seldom use by their own, but it's really more efficient in such a context. Okay, in questo tipo di strategia noi riusciamo a immaginare a sommare le tre linee in un unico accordo, e che è una strategia che spesso a volte i suoi i suoi studenti riescono a utilizzare. So there are other, other exercises I offer to my students, which are somewhat more advanced and who are binding the dictation tasks into other contexts, which I find very interesting all the time, because it gets boring always to write only the melody. <laughs> For example, to take an orchestra piece and to try to write a piano reduction of it. This brings you to analyze instrumentation. When you hear the music, you, you, must, you must think about how can I put it on the piano. You will not play all octaves of the orchestra. And you will think about, oh, what is really the main note? What does the flute do? Does I have to play the flute? Or can I omit it to have a similar expression? This can be really very, very interesting. Here are some recommendations what can be interesting for this. Okay, the possibility is to listen to a piano orchestra and try to realize a reduction pianistica senza avere una, una verità prefissata, ma vedere come l'allievo riesce a portare in una estensione limitata quella che è un'estensione più grande di diversi strumenti dell'orchestra. O, the reverse uh, experiment is to give a piano reduction and the recording and to let re-instrumentate due to the recording. This is really astonishing, you learn so much about instrumentation, especially when you take a classical piece and a classical orchestra with original instruments where the, where the, the woodwinds are melting so good together yet that you nearly cannot focus one out and you will be astonished when you look to the score. This is really interesting. Interessant is that the contrary is ascoltare un brano per l'orchestra avendo a disposizione una riduzione pianistica e cercare di ricostruire quali sono le, le, le voci originali cioè di ciascuna parte. O preparing falsificated scores really carefully so it shall not be setting mistakes, no parallels and so on. This is not so easy to be made but you can, you can take choral settings that I do, uh, mega choral setting five voice and I make falsification, very, very uh, simple falsification, um, six degree instead of first after the dominant, and I let first the students read and imagine the sound and then hear the recording. This is also some kind of, of dictation in a wider Un'altra possibilità è quella di avere trascrizioni di brani uh, nelle quali sono volutamente inseriti degli errori che la, la, lo studente deve riconoscere errori a livello armonico, quindi un sesto grado al posto di un primo grado e così via. Yes, and then working with non-tonal contexts or contexts going out of tonality is for me always a re-experiencing of familiar things. It's not totally new. Uh, and so uh, here are some um, some examples which I like to work with. I will not show them, them all, but I can give you all the materials if you are interested in this, because here is very well to be seen how, how the uh, per perception of familiar things changes. So, so in, in, in feeling for the distance of intervals outside of tonality can change totally, or consonance and dissonance feeling can change, especially in Bartok, in this, in this uh, Part of duos or in the string quartet, it's really, really challenging for the students and very, very interesting. Anche il lavoro con materiale non tonale è molto interessante. O modal in this, in this case. Modal, certo. È interessante perché uh, gli stessi intervalli uh, siamo, ai quali siamo abituati ad associare un colore, una sensazione ben precisa, uh, inseriti in un contesto diverso, non tonale, e acquistano una significato, un senso, un colore 
completamente diverso. Or to deal with 12 ton rows and to try out Schoenberg or Oberg, what did he hear while he composed? So I learned by heart this row, I learned by heart to have all four modi, so um, reverse and, and, and the, um, the inversion of the row. I can hear, I can improvise melodies with it. What does it change in my perception when I write this as a dictation? l'utilizzo di materiale seriale permette di focalizzarsi su aspetti diversi, quindi nel momento in cui io sento un tema e cerco di seguire gli intervalli, quando poi ho lo stesso tema proposto al retrogrado, all'inverso, questo mi, mi permette di avere un'attenzione sul, sul materiale intervallare diversa rispetto a quella che è quando uno stesso intervallo, uno stesso materiale è inserito in un contesto tonale. So students sometimes are disappointed from this exercise because they say I thought it to be more modern. <laughs> really, they, they really like this at the point when they see how traditional 12 tone music is thought, especially in Schoenberg. So, when you are interested in all these teaching materials, which, which I only can shortly show in this, in this context, please contact me. I can put this in a Dropbox se and you can. Se avete you can bisogno use it. di materiale, è anche ben disponibile a fornirvi, a fornirvelo senza nessun problema. Okay. Thank you very much. Grazie tanti.